Welcome once again to our daily video devotions, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Poppy. Thanks for tuning in. Today we'll be looking at the introit for Sexagesima Sunday. We'll be celebrating that tomorrow in church. That'll set the stage for all of our readings throughout the week. We are about 60 days before our celebration of Easter. Our intro at four today are selected verses from Psalm 44. Awake! Why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Rise up. Come to our help. O God, we have heard with our ears. Our fathers have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. But you have saved us from our foes and have put to shame those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Awake. Why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Rise up. Come to our help. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever felt like God was asleep? Well, maybe not specifically or particularly taking a nap or snoozing, but asleep to you, asleep to your cares, asleep to your problems. You cry out to God, and it appears, because nothing happens, nothing changes, that God has turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to your cries, to your worries, to your cares, to your burdens, to your prayers. My friends, many times in the life of a Christian, we are suffering or being afflicted. Maybe it's because of a particular sin or consequence of sin from something that we've done. Maybe it's a sin or consequence of sin that someone else is doing to us. Maybe it's a sin or a consequence of sin in the world. It doesn't really matter at this point. We hurt. We're in trouble. We're in pain. We're afflicted, and we cry out to God, and nothing happens. At least, nothing on our timeline happens. We become frustrated. We begin to doubt and worry. Is God really out there? Does God really care? Wake up! Wake up, God. What do I need to do to rouse you from your slumber? This is what the psalmist is crying out at the beginning of our intro at Psalm 44. Our soul is bowed down to the dust. We are bowed down in pain, in suffering, in sorrow, in humiliation, in repentance. And we beg God to rise up and help us. My friends, God has promised not only to hear our prayers, but to answer our prayers. He doesn't always give us what we want, but he promises that he hears and he answers. We are his dear children, and he is our dear father. He takes care of his children. He promises never to leave us nor forsake us. He promises that he will not abandon us, not even to the grave. And so when we are conflicted and tormented and weighed down with a feeling that maybe perchance God has abandoned us, God teaches us to turn to him and to turn to his word, to be reminded of his mighty acts of old, how all the things recorded for us in the scripture 
our history, our faith history, how God has delivered our fathers, our forefathers. God has delivered generation after generation from the jaws of death, from the oppression of the enemies. We recount the wonderful and marvelous deeds of God, and we can come to only one conclusion. God cannot, God will not abandon his children. God cannot, God will not abandon you. My friends, how can we be sure? Because God, in his love and mercy, sent his own dear son into this world. This win world of sin and trouble and turmoil and abandonment. Jesus lives and dies and rises again to prove his love and win for you forgiveness, life, and salvation. God even abandoned his own dear son as he hung on a cross so that he would never, ever, ever abandon you, his child. My friends, today, tomorrow, always cling to the promises of God. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. For our cries and our worries and our tribulations are always answered with the same thing. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. And that is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christian Church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, 
to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us good more. To, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us good more. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, 
and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.